Well, Dennis and Peter, it's really nice to catch up with you again. And I trust you both keeping well. I am, thanks. Yeah, I you. Good. So, I wanted to catch up with you because I understand the Australian federal government has released its first budget. What were the key themes? Thanks, Rod. Um, yes, we've got a new federal government, uh, and this is their first budget. Uh, it's actually our second budget of the calendar year, because uh, we had one earlier on with the previous government. But uh, but uh, this is their first budget, and so um, there are a number of policy priorities they've focused on. Um, they took to election and um, had some consultation beforehand um, that are very much internationally focused. So overall, the budget, it's a steady budget. Uh, Australia is suffering a similar type of fiscal problems as other countries um, coming out of COVID uh, with fiscal deficits. The budget is overall uh, generally quite a steady budget, no significant new spending or taxing measures, um, except for some interesting changes in the international tax base that will impact uh, multinational groups, uh, which we thought would be interesting to, to talk about. Um, and in particular, three of those, one around thin capitalisation or our earnings stripping rules, uh, some changes there. Um, also changes around the payment uh, payments in respect of intangibles. Uh, to countries that are subject to a low rate of tax, which will be set at 15%. And then thirdly, some significant new tax transparency disclosure um, obligations. So those are the three main uh, international parts. Well, then I, so let's just uh, hover on uh, thin capitalization for a minute because deductibility of interest is always of key interest to multinationals as they organize their capital structure. What are the proposed changes to thin capitalization? So Rodney, uh, broadly there's sort of three main changes. So the first one is that the typical safe harbor debt amount we use for our thin capitalization rules, which is a asset based test essentially. So it's 60% gearing ratio will be removed. That's with effect from the first or income years beginning on or after the 1st of July, 2023. And the proposal is to replace that with 30% um, EBITDA earnings stripping rule. So that's a rule obviously similar to what we see in many European countries and in line with the OECD's um, BEPS action item four. Um, in addition to that, we have a worldwide gearing test, which will be removed and replaced with a sort of a worldwide interest um, EBITDA ratio as well. And then finally, um, some significant changes to our arms length debt test. So the arms length debt test right now focuses really on what, what would a arms length lender lend to um, an Australian taxpayer based upon sort of the business and assets of that particular Australian taxpayer. Um, so that can obviously apply right now to say related party debt. Going forward, that arms length debt test will solely be related to unrelated party debt, so really third party bank debt. Uh, so that will naturally affect a number of different um, players, especially say potentially property and infrastructure transactions uh, where sort of related party debt has often been a significant feature. And why has Australia adopted these changes now? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, because in a sense, Australia is late to the game of uh, adopting earnings stripping rules that align with um, you know, BEPS 1.0 Action 4. Um, and you know, reflecting back, our thin capitalisation rules have been around for quite a long while. Um, when they were first introduced, they actually had a 75% gearing ratio of assets uh, limit, um, and that was felt to be too generous. And so that was reduced to the 60% that Dennis mentioned. Um, and at the time that uh, the OECD released its, its paper on action on four, Australia looked at its thin capitalisation rules and decided it didn't want to change. Uh, it felt they were robust enough. Um, having said that, we've got a new government to come in and has looked at this space, and we do have a fiscal deficit. Um, and so the changes both align Australia with a number of our peer nations, um, bringing us in similar to where the UK stands, um, but they do raise revenue. They're forecast to raise a significant amount of revenue over the four year forward um, estimates period. Um, and so they go to that as well. Um, in particular, as Dennis mentioned, by making the arms length debt, te debt test restrictive, whereas at the moment, it's an alternative that can allow you to have more debt than you would under our existing safe harbor. Um, so I think there's a combination of um, coming into line with global norms there, as well as raising some, re raising some revenue at the same time. Well, that's interesting, Peter. So the raising revenue point means fewer interest deductions in the Australian tax base, I guess. So what do multinational businesses need to know about these changes today then? 
I think the first thing, Rodney, is we're looking for more detail. Um, so as Peter mentioned, we have seen some consultation pre the budget, uh, but the budget announcement itself still had a lot of matters that were left unsaid or that would obviously need to be fleshed out further once we see draft legislation. So I think the first thing is, um, you know, there, there's only a very short time frame. So I think it's very clear that these measures will begin in 2023. So there's not a lot of time, firstly, to reconsider one debt and equity mixture and obviously mm. potentially capital structures more generally. So that's that's obviously a very important feature. Uh, I think secondly, just to understand, well, some of these details around sort of related party debt, how that affect, as, as I mentioned, things like infrastructure or property um, investments. So, for example, will that affect, say, financing companies as well, how we actually define and measure um, third party debt? Uh, and in, in addition, um, there will be a number of features around sort of ongoing or consequences around maybe changing capital structure. So would there be any considerations around, say, uh, commercial debt forgiveness rules that also apply in Australia if one was to replace uh, debt with equity um, or sort of, you know, re restructure one's capital structure? So there are a number of considerations, I suppose, that uh, taxpayers need to be cognizant of. But as I mentioned, I think the first thing we're so sort of all is waiting and watching to see is, is more detail around how these rules will actually be, be sort of brought in and, and some of the detail around the EBITDA calculations and, and how they might affect um, specific taxpayers. And Dennis, I know it's crystal ball gazing, but uh, when might these additional details be forthcoming? Yeah, it's a great question, Rodney. Um, obviously, there's a fairly packed legislative agenda, as you can imagine, with the new government in place. I think we're, we're hoping to see... Um, draft legislation probably either at the end of this year or first quarter of, of next year um, at the latest. So I think um, really it's for Treasury, I think it's a high priority for them to sort of provide some draft legislation for them further consultation. Got it. And I think you were saying that these rules are proposed to take effect sometime in 23. Uh, when abouts in 23? Yep. So it's income years beginning on or after the 1st of July, 2023. Okay. Um, so picked at the time, and look, it's probably also important to understand, I, we all expect there'll be no grandfathering either. I think to Peter's point around this being broadly a revenue raising um, rule, that it's probably unlikely to see anything to grandfather existing arrangements in, so it is quite a short period um, to sort of restructure and prepare for these rules. Well, certainly if you're trying to forecast out your effective tax rate, July next year is just around the corner if you're wanting to do any restructuring. So that's a, a very big thing. So gosh, I'm sure there was plenty more in the budget, uh, Peter and Dennis. So I'm going to be tapping you on the shoulder again to hear more about this in the upcoming days. So for now, thank you. That's fascinating. And it's truly a good point to take away. Debt financing is such a critical part of multinational businesses' overall capital structure that staying on top of rule changes like this is just a critical must-do. So thank you for your time today.